Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. Amor. Eres tan linda hoy. Gracias. A mí? Te ves igual. Okay. Yikes. You know that if Mike's friend were there, she would say, what's her name, Nelsie? Would say, Mike, did you just, you didn't hear what she said because you didn't understand the Spanish. She said, you look the same. You said she looked pretty and then she's looking down and says, you look the same. I mean, wake up. It's like, ugh. So I talked to your mom last night and she told me that I'm your first serious relationship. Así que hablé con tu mamá anoche y me contó que soy tu primera relación seria. Mentira. <laughs> He tenido varias relaciones serias. Yeah, I wondered about that. I wondered if for Jimena she's like, no, I, I've had serious relationships. My mom just doesn't frame it that way, or I didn't really let my mom into my life, or yeah, okay. So take back everything I said earlier. <laughs> Lo que pasa es que me aburro. Okay, but... What happens is I get bored. I've heard that before. I don't know about Jimena, but what that can mean... Sometimes, not always, sometimes people just get boring to people. Sometimes there's, there's no chemistry. But if it's a pattern, then... Well, I guess, so let's just use this as a jumping off point. For y'all out there... If you have this, what Jimena has, which is this experience of having a number of startups to relationships and then quickly getting bored or quickly getting repulsed or quickly or at some point having this like claustrophobic feeling like, get me the heck out of here. It can mean, obviously, we wouldn't know. It could mean literally that you just don't, it just didn't work with us, but it could mean that certain levels of vulnerability are tolerable, but beyond a certain level, it becomes extremely uncomfortable. And I've worked with clients like this, where they have significant relational traumas growing up. It's usually emotional neglect, not always, but something like that. Essentially, early on, the child learns to be very independent and some vulnerability and some dependency is okay, but beyond a certain level, it always or very usually equates to a lot of pain and abandonment and neglect. So the child and the adult will learn that some involvement is fine, but beyond a certain threshold, it's you're definitely going to get hurt. There's definitely going to be a lot of bad things. And so the conscious mind becomes convinced of certain ideas of repulsiveness or boredom or something, whereas on the inside, there's extreme terror. And because it's so, it, it was developed during the nonverbal phases of your life, you don't really have a conscious understanding of what's happening to you. And because you weren't, you were emotionally neglected to the point where you don't even really have a chance to get in touch with your emotions. As an adult, you're not uh, aware of the fact that you're scared, but you are aware of the fact that you're bored or that you're repulsed. Now, I, I don't want to say that that's Jimena. She's perfectly. Uh, within her rights to be bored or repulsed by whoever she wants to be. I don't know about her, but again, using it as a jumping off point, if, if you have a pattern of this, you want to investigate, particularly if you have evidence of potential emotional neglect growing up. And the emotional neglect can be overt and very obvious, but sometimes it can be just like a single mom who works uh, full time and is stressed out and there's three kids. Sometimes just that alone can produce a situation where, and there's no uh, support for parenting, there's neglect, emotional neglect. The parent is there, you're, you're fed, you're housed, you're loved, but you're a latchkey kid, you are left to your own devices a lot of the times, um, you're not being traumatized, you're not being abused, but there's a general vibe of, I need to figure things out on my own and my mom isn't always going to be there for me. And again, it's pre-verbal, so it it's becomes a part of your personality. It's really ingrained in who you are. And I've worked with clients like this where when there's a certain amount of vulnerability, they're totally fine. They're in love. It feels good. Cross a certain line and they just become convinced consciously that they're bored or they're done or they're not in love with this person or they're claustrophobic, or they're repulsed, or some combination of all the above, 
they break up, they move on, and then they look back and they say, what, what was I doing? And then they want to get back with the person because they're now that the vulnerability has gone below the threshold, they're back in love with They can now, their, their fear isn't overwhelming their love for the person. And they're like, what, what did I do? I left that person. And they go back. And again, it'd be very confusing for all concerned, right? So there's a possibility that for Jimena, that is part of it. Because we, at least we saw in, you know, an N of one, a sample size of one, at least one example that would potentially fit in that model of understanding relationships in psychology, which is that in the beginning, she was in love. She's introducing to kids. She's like, yes, let's do this. Although we wouldn't say she was super enthusiastic, at least as much as he was, but at least, you know, into it, tolerant of it. <laughs> um, I think, you know, but into it enough and wanted to be with him. And then once it became across a threshold, then boredom or repulsiveness or get away from me kicked in, which it sounds like maybe she has a pattern of that. Do you want to get married then? Pero, ¿por qué quieres casarte? Porque tú querías casarte ligero. Pero yo en realidad no me quiero casar aún. Again, using as a jumping off point, for some people who have this syndrome, they will sometimes it want to be close to their threshold, but not beyond. And one of the ways they can kind of manage that is by never committing and never saying, let's get married or never taking the relationship to the next level. So there's always a, a it, they are, they're always trying to get the relationship back to the vibe of it was in the first three months. And to the partners is obviously can be very frustrating and hurtful. Your mom did tell me to be patient with you. Bueno, tu mamá me dijo que tuviera paciencia contigo. Para mí es difícil tener una persona para toda la vida porque, o sea, yo estoy muy joven y para yo lo único que quiero es divertirme, gozar. Okay, we heard a similar thing from Evelyn with Corey of someone that just really isn't interested at this point in their life of being married, of being locked down. Uh, locked down? <laughs> That's not the saying, is it? Um, and she is totally entitled to that. You can be that at any point in life. And she's saying, because I'm young, that's that's okay. Then just say that to someone. Just say, hey, I'm just not at a point where I want to get married, and I'm sorry. Uh, maybe in 10 years, if we're still together, but you know, is it realistic that we're still going to be together long distance? It's totally fine, but it, that's always the frustration of the show. There's a lot of things that I think are rational and healthy and totally fine and not immoral. But then the implementation of, I'm looking down at my phone, I'm gonna string him along, even though I might not be consciously doing that. And without just saying, hey, I, I just gotta tell you where I'm, where I'm at right here. Um, I'm repulsed by you. Maybe there's a chance that we'll work out. I, I'm not ready for marriage. I, I feel like I'm too young for that. You know, just, just tell someone, just be honest with someone. All those things that I've done that I me fastidia, and I don't know if... Si Mai es el hombre para mí. Mm. Buenas. Para jugar billar. Bueno, bueno. He's bringing her there to talk about a deep conversation, to have a deep conversation. Why would you go to a pool hall to have that conversation, Mike? <laughs> I don't understand. Bueno. Ah, you got it. Ah. Ah. No me siga. Sí. No me siga. Ah. Yo voy a enseñar. No, yo, yo tiro como yo quiera. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean that in the beginning it was it was like get away from me you know the kind of claustrophobia you're you're disgusting you creep me out you know don't uh, but then it's like maybe she just didn't want him to mansplain how to play pool isn't it nice when we have fun together just us no es agradable cuando nos divertimos juntos solo nosotros no porque para mí primero están mis hijos que tú y divertirme con mis hijos lo mejor que puede haber Okay, so again, I'm pretty sure this relationship is over, but 
it's <laughs> like it's harsh. Uh, there's another way to say that, right? Which is, yeah, it's fun to be with you, but I miss my kids. That's all you have to say. Instead of, no, this is not fun for me because I want to be with my kids. <laughs> Jimena's been treating me with a cold shoulder almost this entire trip. And I'm really just tired of um, walking on eggshells, reading between the lines, thinking about what's going on in Jimena's head. Does she want this? Does she want me to stick around? Does she want me to go? I really don't know. Yeah, and it makes sense. It takes time to adjust. He was engaged to her, and it's only been a f number of days of this new reactivity from Jimena. So it takes him some time. But of course, from the viewership side of things, you're like, dude, it's obvious. <laughs> but of course, when you're there, there's there has been some indication. You know, when they did have that talk, she hugged him and kissed him in, in the way that I'm guessing he is reminiscent of the way things used to be so it's um but from the outside you're just like dude just just go home it's, it's clear she's done i just want to ask you don't love me you need your space i just can't stop thinking that your feelings changed when i stopped saying yes to buying everything whoa <laughs> i didn't expect it to go there i mean what's she supposed to say to that what do you i i if I were his friend, I'd be like, don't ask that question. She's going to deny it. There, there's no way she's going to, oh, yeah, you're right. That's that's the whole thing. Plus, it, it's there's a good possibility that really doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, what I would ask him to ask her is, okay, what are your feelings? Tell me what's going on. I want to know. You know, just be honest with me. Do you, are you into me or are you not? Let's not talk about love. Maybe there's different definitions of that. Do you want to be with me? Do you want me, you know, when you're, especially at this phase, like you're supposed to want someone. You're supposed to like, I want you. I need you. I want to see you. I want to talk to you. I can't, I want to spend all my time with you. You know, that's typically, you don't need that to be true, but you know, that's, I think what is sort of relationship Mike is looking for. It's certainly the way Mike feels about her. So I would, would just wish he would ask that question. <laughs> Cambiaron cuando dejé de decir que sí a qué. Tú tienes cosas que a mí no me gustan. Es eso que a mí me cambió totalmente los sentimientos. Yeah, and I've talked about this before. There are a number of different hypotheses. I'll briefly summarize. One is is that she never loved him and has been acting like it to get money out of him. I don't think that's true. On uh, in the middle is she was into him kind of enough legitimately also into him but really motivated by finances which isn't deplorable it's okay to get two birds with one stone if you will by getting the uh, romance and marriage while also the convenience and really potentially the life-saving aspects of financial security I don't know where she's at in terms of that need but and then on the other on the other end of the spectrum is she really doesn't see him as a, a vector to money and was totally in love with him from the beginning. And uh, after him going back to the United States and coming back to, uh, to Columbia, she just fell out of love with him for some reason, as she sometimes does. So, you know, I don't know which one. I tend to think it's probably that, that middle option. And and that she was uh, into him enough. And when he came back, she just had that thing that she does with a lot of people where she just, yeah, I was sort of, you know, I could see her saying, look, I was a little swept up in the moment, the family support and the glitz and the glamor of the show and the proposal and the ring and the cake and you know everything it just seemed like magical and i was i was like yeah this could be great but then as soon as he went back home i was like nah this isn't for me but i couldn't really admit it and then when he came back i was annoyed with him and it I, and i kind of like the fact that he had money that he could actually help my family and help my kids so i, I could see that being the scenario but i don't know what do you think? Y aún me pagas el arriendo, entonces no, no, hay, no es por eso. Esto me ofende mucho, me da mucha rabia porque es una persona que lo quiere a uno no le dice esto, es, me está humillando, me está sacando las cosas en caro. 
Si May piensa que yo solamente lo tomo a él es por el dinero, realmente nunca me conoció. De verdad que no. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty awful accusation. And sometimes we'll see this on the show where, like, I think Ed might have done this. Others, of course, Darcy towards Georgie. If you're legitimately, at least in part, having affection for someone and then they accuse you of everything you've ever done has been motivated by a scam and by money, that's like pretty hurtful, right? Like just, I've been pouring my heart out kind of to some extent with you and you're you're now accusing me of all that was fake because I wanted money out of you? That's, you know, that's pretty hurtful. I could see that. De ahora en adelante seremos amigos, tú no me mandas dinero, no me ayudas con nada y yo pago mis cosas. Yeah, I mean, if she legit did have feelings for him and was wavering with that and then you get accused of that, that is the response that I think a lot of people have. Okay, uh, I'm, you're not paying for anything anymore. I, because I don't want I want to make it clear that this was not about money and that that's that's not the sort of person that I am so no more money now some might say it's always been a scam and she knows that the scam is over and so she's just acting like she's all acting upset when she's being accused of something real and she just perceives or she can't tolerate him anymore so the money bags issue is now over and so she's just going through this the steps of ending that I don't know but I tend to believe in people and think that uh, she did have some feelings for him and that it, this is legitimately hurtful to her. So you just want to be friends? That's it? After this whole year and a half? Entonces solo quieren ser amigos. Eso es todo después de todo este año y medio. Sí. Tú no serás más mi novio ni yo seré tu novia. Seremos amigos si tú quieres. Now, if I were there, I would say, are you breaking up with them? It sounds like that, but let's be clear. Are you breaking up with him? Are you going to start dating other people? Is he allowed to date? You know, like those kinds of details have to be discussed. Maybe not in this instance, but eventually, right? Because so often it's like he goes home and he's uh, then he's waiting for her. It's like, well, I thought we decided we would just go through a phase of just being friends. And, and, and I think she's breaking up with him, which I, th I think is the right move given how she feels about him. But I hope that he really understands that. And I hope they define exactly what that means. Okay. Anything I paid for, I want to take back with me to New York. Está bien, pero me gustaría llevar de vuelta con... Yikes. So if that was facilitatable, then I would say, okay, if he bought her a bunch of jewelry or something, all right, uh, you could debate the ethics of that. But he gave stuff to the kids. So that he's ripping that stuff away from the kids as well? Because if so, that's a big time yikes, big time yikes. Si tú te quieres llevar todo lo que en mi casa, llévatelo todo. No lo necesito. Hoy termina nuestra relación. Y es en serio. Okay, good. She's being clear. There's no ambiguity to that. She's even saying, fine, take everything back. Which should show that she wasn't in it just for the money. And, you know, that's good. I'm guessing he won't do it. I hope, hope he doesn't do it. I hope he's just like, well, you know, it's for the kids and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. So... If we just look at it from both their perspective, this is painful for both of them. For her, she was engaged and and she found that she just didn't like him, wasn't into him, and this is a huge change. She also has to deal with the fact that her kids were attached to Mike. You know, there's a lot of loss here. And for him, obviously, it's a huge loss as well. So, you know, there's a lot of pain. Se acaba todo. what? I'm done. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, that makes total sense. Just being told that, and, I mean, because he's operating from the place of there's a possibility. Uh, it wasn't long ago that she was hugging and kissing him and, you know, saying, if you just do these little things, everything, and he had reasons to believe that that would work in the past when the first time he was down there, 
she would complain and he would change and then they got engaged you know there was a real path to recovery and so I, you know he's still in that zone he's still hoping and then sh- she in a very definitive way says we're done and you know there's another way to say it if you're her just be like hey you know what if you want everything back that's fine it's pretty hurtful you would say that but i think we need to end this relationship and i'm really sorry you know there's another way of saying it but fine she said it it's clear and she wasn't mean or hostile about it she just was matter of fact and this is devastating him and he's on camera that's the thing about this is that just think about everyone out there you're just think about the worst breakup you've ever been through which i'm guessing this is for mike it might be the only breakup he's ever been through and imagine that you're in a foreign country and there's all these cameras pointing at you like that's that's going to be a pretty stressful situation and it would have made sense for him to be like to take a walk or i got to get out of here but with the cameras around yeah it makes total sense so i hope the can i don't know just let him go just he needs some time this is perhaps one of the worst moments of his life just but of course it's reality tv so they have to document it I don't know what I did wrong. Everything she said on the first trip, I tried to fix myself. And she's crying, so it shows that, of course, she has feelings about this. This is hard for her. I I don't think she wants to hurt his feelings. And she's losing a lot, too. Uh, She's losing what she thought was going to be their future. So, yeah. My mind's going crazy. Okay, so the producer asks, do you, or someone asks, do you think you'll regret this decision? And she says, I don't know. Which is interesting, you know. It. I thought she was going to be like, nope, I'm not going to regret it. But she says, I don't know. Uh, is that because of the love that she once felt for him or the level of affection she felt for him? Was it the fact that with the kids now and the disappointment there? I don't know. Yeah, we're getting hints of Paul in this situation. Uh, With Paul... It was, I think, less understandable to me anyway when he would go running off and then would just, like, disappear. It felt primal to me. Some sort of childish, I'm just going to run and hide in my bunker somewhere. And also a passive aggression, possibly, of, like, I'm going to make you worry about me. I don't know that about Paul. But with Mike, I think he's just... I think he's deeply devastated. He does. He's ashamed. I think he has shame about his emotions. Have we seen that? I feel like we've already seen that where he would begin to cry. And, you know, he's not, he hasn't exhibited that he's comfortable crying in front of the camera. I, I don't think. Anyway, I think he's embarrassed and humiliated and going to a very regressive place. So it makes sense that he'd just be like, and maybe he feels like, And they might have edited it out of him being like, look, can you leave me alone? So, and I'm guessing the internet's going to make fun of him for this, which I think is not nice. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.